Oh, look at my glasses. Thank you. Thank you. What's that? Is so if people could move down just a little bit. You would scoot down a little bit. Thank you. Hello everyone and welcome to Perry's Cave. Can everyone in the back hear me okay? Yes. Yep. Great. My name is M, just like the letter, and I will be your tour guide today. I do have a few things to talk about before we go down into the cave. The first of those things being that the stairs get very steep and narrow about halfway down. Please hold on to the hand railing, watch your step, and turn your feet sideways when you need to. There will also be a large rock right in front of you as you're coming down the stairs. This starts the beginning of the low ceiling in the cave. Please duck. <laughs> the cave does not appreciate being headbutted, and I promise that you won't either. There is no food nor drink allowed down in the cave, so if you have any of that, please leave it up here. Please do not leave any belongings in the cave. Whatever it is, a backpack, a purse, a child, don't leave it down there. I don't want it. Please leave down there. We have hand sanitizer here at the top and at the bottom of the stairs. And our number one rule for the cave, this is very important, so please listen up. Do not touch the cave. Do not touch the ceiling. Do not touch any rocks. Do not bend over and touch the ground. The natural oils in your hands will clog up the pores of the cave, which stops the cave from growing for hundreds of years. We consider our cave to be active as it is constantly growing, so please don't touch it and make it inactive. Also, because this is an active cave, it will be dripping a little bit from the ceiling. So especially if you have open-toed shoes like sandals or flip-flops, please watch your step as there will be puddles on the ground. Do we have any questions? No. No. All right. If everyone will please take your time coming down the stairs, please hold on sideways when you need to, and watch your head as we come down into the cave. Please Hold the handrail, Weston. Because they went upstairs, there's going to be parts where it's really narrow, she said, so it's a tight squeeze. So you're going to have to go like in front of you. Oh, she can't. I'm going to try and hold the wall right now. Going down. Hold this kid. Just watch your step. Hold this kid too, Weston. This is a real cave? Yeah, just watch your step. Yeah, just watch your step. Look, there's a weird step right there, Weston. So. No, you just single step it. Hold, just on, hold on to that rail just in case. You're doing good. See how they're getting skinny? It's all right. Yeah, you might want to duck real low. Yeah. Yeah. This is a real cave, buddy. And it's always dripping. See that drip right there? Eventually, they will form. See the little slide on top? Just stand in front of that. I want to take a picture. Turn around. Why does it say that? 
It's like it does this yeah. countdown before actually. Yeah. Right. Well, you guys probably set up on for like uh, uh. I didn't change it. Mm. Are you guys at the back of the line to let people down the stairs? Yep. Yes. Yep. Great. Yep. All right. Welcome oh, down here you. into Perry's Knees. You may have noticed it's a lot colder down here than it was upstairs. Well, that is because it is 52 degrees down here, and it stays that same temperature all year round. In the summer, when it's 110 degrees outside, it's 52 in here. In the winter, when it's negative 10 degrees outside, it's 52 in here. It stays the same because we're about 50 feet below ground. I bet that some of you have already gotten dripped on. If you haven't been dripped on yet, I promise that you probably will by the end of our tour. We call those cave kisses, so congratulations, you can kiss with Harry's cave. Our cave kisses come from our stalactites on the ceiling. Stalactites form when groundwater filters through the limestone layer above us and collects a mineral called calcium carbonate. That calcium then collects on the ceiling as the water drips down, forming these soda straw-like formations. On the ground, you'll see our stalagmites. Stalagmites form the same way as our stalactites, except that that calcium drips down onto the ground and builds from the ground up. The way that I remember the difference between stalactites and stalagmites is that stalactites hold on tight to the ceiling, and stalagmites grow up mighty from the ground. You may also see that everything down here looks very small, or as if it's been broken off. Well, I have a story for you guys. One of our previous owners, around the late 1800s, was very, very smart. And when I say he's very smart, I mean he was super dumb. He thought it would be a really good idea to cut down all of the stalactites and all of the stalagmites and to sell them in the gift shop above us for as much as five cents a piece. That's terrible, yeah? Yeah. yeah. He didn't think that was terrible, though, because he thought that they would just grow back next season like plants. But spoiler alert, these are not plants. They're rocks. Who knew? Wow. He didn't know that it would take anywhere from 50 to 300 years for a stalactite to grow one inch and twice that amount of time for a stalagmite to grow one inch. So clearly for him, next season was not going to come anytime soon. Luckily though, we are left with some pretty interesting rock formations that we like to call our cave art. You can see where I'm pointing my flashlight right now. You might be able to see the head of a lion and his mane. You might be able to see his body as he's laying down and his tail. Do we see the lion laying down? Yes. Yeah. You might also be able to see that he is having a staring contest with our friendly cave box turtle. Yes. His name is Steve. Everyone say hi to Steve. Hi, Steve. He appreciates your guys being so nice. And then if you have an especially active imagination, you might be able to see our celebrity guest, Homer Simpson, taking a nap. <laughs> Please watch your head as the ceiling gets low. Please watch your step as there are lots of rocks and puddles on the ground. And please follow me. Okay. It's really low when you're getting You're talking about the formation right here in front of us. That's what she was talking about. Looks like a lion right there. A big one's over the turtle. That's a weird one. Or he just step.
You can also see that our cable has a green tint to it. I'll give you a hint as to why it's green. It's a she similar reason to as to why the Statue of rock. Liberty is green. Oh, copper. copper! It is, and in this case, it's copper from pennies. You may wonder, why are there pennies in our cave lake? Well, do you remember that same owner that I talked about before that was very, very smart? Yeah. Yeah, well, he decided it would be a really good idea to turn our cave lake into a wishing well. So all of the visitors would come through and throw all their coins into the lake, and at the end of the day, the underpaid tour guides had to dive down into the water to collect their tips. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I would not want to collect my tips that way, I'll tell you that. So they dove down into the water and grabbed only the silver coins, leaving the pennies behind. Because who wants to dive into 50 degree water just for pennies? Not me. So over time, with the pennies being left behind, the copper in the pennies oxidized, giving our cave lake its green tint. You may have also noticed that we have a sign there that says alligator on it. We don't actually have an alligator, we just have this rock that kind of looks like one. His head is where I'm pointing my flashlight right now. His name is Jeffrey. Everyone say hi to Jeffrey. Hi, hi Jeffrey. Jeffrey. Hi, Jeffrey. Wow, you guys are so nice and polite that Jeffrey has decided to show you guys a cave lake secret. If you can see at the bottom of his tail a black dot, that is one of the last remaining pennies in our cave lake. Pretty cool, right? How about a little bit of history? So we have seen Perry's Monument, right? The giant tower looking thing on Putin Bay. Yeah, so Paris Monument celebrates us winning the War of 1812 and the Battle of Lake Erie. So Commodore Oliver Hazard Perry and his men were fighting on the Battle of Lake Erie when they had, a, when they had run out of fresh drinking water. Because they were on a freshwater lake, they decided it would be a good idea to start drinking the lake water. Well, the problem with that was that they were throwing all their waste off of one side of the boat, and they were getting their drinking water from the other side of the boat. Really nasty. So, they got super, super sick, and the war was starting to look bad for them. So they came here to put in bay in search of fresh drinking water. On their own, they did not actually find it. But with the help of the Shawnee Native Americans that were here at the time, they were led to this cave and this cave lake where they barreled out the water and nursed the men back to health. Some of our other tour guides like to say that because the men were no longer sick and dehydrated, that this cave and this cave lake is the reason why we won the Battle of Lake Erie and we are not part of Canada right now. I don't know how much of an exaggeration that is to say, but, you know, tour guides, right? <laughs> to conclude our tour today, do we have any questions about the cave? Yes, This rock right here has a whole bunch of, like, blue or black little veins in it. Why does that occur? It's just the way that the, um, that the minerals deposit in it. But another similar thing to that is over around the lanterns around here, there's actually a residue from the soot from the lanterns. Um, so it's that so that over there is either just mineral deposits or it's soot from the lanterns clogging up the pores. I don't know the exact reason, but I know it's one of those two. Okay. Yep. Any other questions? No? But any questions for me personally? <laughs> no? <laughs> God! <laughs> I'm offended. Not really, but oh. <laughs> well, if we don't have any more questions, how about if I ask you guys some questions? <laughs> I'm going to quiz you guys on names. Don't worry, I told you guys all the answers earlier. You just gotta tap into that good memory. All right, ready? What are these the ceiling calls? Stalactites. Stalactites. What are these on the ground called? Stalagmites. Stalagmites. What is that? Stalagmites. 
Come in from outside where it's 110 and be able to go down into your cave and cool off.